Okay, we're going to do a little Raoult's Law. Let's make a graph. Okay, the graph will stop right there. Raoult's Law says, uh, I'll just put these in different colors. PA equals XA, PA naught. Okay? And then to make our graph complete, we usually do this kind in a little box just to make it look prettier. There's no other reason. Okay, so what we're going to do is plot on this side pressure of whatever component it is. So I'll put PI. Down here we're going to plot X. And I'll put uh, XA in red. And XA, the smallest value it can be is what? Zero. Zero. And the biggest value for XA? One. One. Okay, so this one looks, it'd be a linear, because this is a linear function. Going up like that. What's this point right there, in terms of pressure? Up here. PA naught. When x0 is 1, xa is 1, PA equals PA naught. Right, we're plotting, in this case, we're plotting PA. Okay? So that's component A. Let's say there's component B also in solution. So I'll do that in blue. PB equals XB, PB naught. And we're going to say there's only A and B. That's it. So we know that, say, XA plus XB equals 1. That's, that's all there is. Okay, so now for x b, if x a is one, x b has to be zero. It's kind of the opposite. Remember, the sum of those two is one. If x b, if x a is zero, x b has to be one. So this scale is uh, backwards of uh, the x a scale. So that means if xb is 0, then I'll put this in parentheses in blue, pb. Then if xb is 0, pb has to be 0. So we're going to start off right here. Okay? xb 0, that's this point. Then pb has to be 0. And it's going to be linear because this is a, a linear function like this. At the point where xb is 1, then uh, pb equals pb naught. So this point here, pb naught. Now let's add those two up. p total equals pa plus pb, which equals xa pa naught plus x, b, p, b, naught. It's the sum of those two, which actually is just going to be a line connecting the two pure pressures. Okay? So this is actually right here, p total. Which is p, a, plus p, b. You can see how that works on the edges. Zero plus p, a, naught, just p, a, naught. Yeah, those two lines here, the red and the blue. You add these two, it's going to be here, and every point you add, it should kind of end up being a linear function. Okay, so what happens is, this is called an ideal. If it follows this, it's an ideal solution. Okay? Not everything will follow this ideal solution. So sometimes, there'll be kind of negative deviation, meaning it follows below the expected line. It just hangs a little low. So we call this negative uh, deviation. The same thing would happen if it went above. It'd be called positive deviation. And I think I, I should draw something like this out for you in class. Does that sound right? 
So if it goes above, again, it's called positive deviation. I think I drew something like this out. Yeah, so I drew this out in section, in the Raoult's Law section. So uh, if we think about this, negative deviation means there's a p total is smaller than expected. It's a little tinier. That means there's not as high a vapor pressure overall for the solution. It's a little smaller. So that means, if you think about it backwards, the molecules are slightly attracted to each other. So attracted, we expect them to go off in the vapor state, but they don't. They'd rather stay down inside. This happens when you have a polar to another polar. So uh, both A and B are polar. You'd expect a little negative deviation, a smaller pressure than expected, because they're both attracted to each other and they don't want to go off into solution, or out of solution. If you have a positive deviation, and that means it's a little bigger pressure, total pressure, than expected. So A and B are giving off a higher total pressure. That means those molecules don't like each other, and they keep wanting to go off giving a higher vapor pressure. And that usually happens when it's nonpolar uh, to a polar. So meaning either A or B is nonpolar and the other one's polar. And polar and nonpolar just have no given attraction to each other. Uh, and so they usually cause a, a positive deviation. The only one that really gives the ideal is a nonpolar with another nonpolar because they have no dipoles, and so there's no issues when they interact with each other. They're just kind of neutral to each other. Does that help? Yes. Okay.